Good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. In, uh, in part one, we uh, laid out just vanilla flavored straight pieces of duck. And in part two, we um, covered a couple of the machines, you know, about running them through and, and putting these locks for these special locks on the edges. And then uh, talked about the machines a little bit and kind of went on a little ramble. In part three, we're going to go a little bit one step farther and we're going to um, talk about transitions. Whenever a transition is just merely a piece of duck, you're going along of a certain dimension, say 20 inches in width, like this one here. You've taken off a few registers and everything, so the quantity of air is available is a little bit less, so you need to increase the velocity so you can make that air travel down the duct just a little bit faster to get to the rest, rest of the registers. So you transcend that duct down from 20 inch, usually in a four inch increment uh, or thereabouts, so you want to drop to, 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 to 16 inch. So today we're going to lay out some transitions and show you how those uh, how those look isometrically and and, uh, and and how you lay them on a piece of metal and, and what you do to make them. What I've drawn here is uh, two transitions that we have to make. They're, they're Well, they're identical, but I've got three different uh, ways of looking at the transition. First and foremost, let's just look at the very top. Uh, if you want to fabricate a transition, just lay out the dimensions that you desire. We need a, something 24 inches in length. Uh, we need something that goes from a 20 inch wide duct here, a 20 inch by eight height down to a 16 inch wide by 8 height duct. So it's very simple just oh, to yeah. draw that. Then you can take it one step farther and draw you an isometric. You can still see you can still see the dimensions on there. Okay, here's our 20 inch in width here by 8 inch in height, 16 inch in width by 8 inch in height. Uh, here's our 24 inch length and you can see that uh, one side is perfectly square. This side tapers in 4 inches from that point to that point down there. And then take it one step farther. You can do another isometric from a different angle. This might be a little bit harder for you to uh, to see, but this is as though you're actually looking on top of it, kind of down inside it at an angle. You can also see your your 20 inch up there, 16, which means it's got a, a four inch taper on one side and uh, the 24 inch in length. So that's the three ways or three of the multiple ways of looking at it. I usually just scratch something like this one right here on a piece of paper and just and, and fabricate off of that. But I just thought I'd show you, uh, give you an idea of um, of what you can kind of do um, whenever you're getting ready to lay something out. Uh, so. One thing I forgot to verify, uh, you know, I got that uh, this transition drawn in or, or laid out uh, on paper as though it's 24 inch in length. Uh, whenever you're measuring up a job, you always try to keep in mind how much play you've got uh, dimension-wise on different things that you uh, that you need to fabricate. In this particular case, remember our very first cut size on the very first piece of the duct uh, was 25 and a quarter. Well, on a 96 inch piece, 25 and a quarter times three is about, uh, what's that, 75 and three quarter. So subtract that from 96, eight foot, and that's how much scrap I got left over. Uh, 21, 22 inches, something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the off fall or what would normally be referred to as scrap off of those first several pieces of flat stock um, <laughs> because what was left over wasn't big enough to get us a full cut size so you set it off to the side. Well, what I do, I'm going to use that material for these, uh, for these transitions. So in other words, we minimize our waste. And really, as long as you've got a, a drive cleat bending rolls on your Pittsburgh machine or on your lock farmer, uh, you use those in two and an eighth inch increments and you can save virtually 95% of all your scrap. There's very little waste whenever you, uh, when you, whenever you do that. Uh, there's also a tool called the bar fold and you can use a bar fold to do the same thing. Uh, but man, it's a whole lot easier. What to we're going to do, we're going to lay out a, um, a, uh, well, a t supposedly a 24 inch long transition from 20 by eight down to 16 by eight. But I was telling you, I'm going to use the off fall or the scrap from some of the uh, um, straight duct layout. And so we're going to actually adjust that 24 inch dimension down to whatever's left over. And what's left over is approximately 20 and a quarter dimension. It doesn't really make any difference at all in this particular case. Hey, First thing you want to do, you want to allow for your, um, for your Pittsburgh. Let's just say we'll, we'll mark a one inch on one side, the lock form is going to go over there, the lock form is going to go over here at that angle. We know we have to have a, this marked off here for a for a S or uh, for an S slip, and on the other end also for an S slip. So now we've got three out of four sides already laid out. All we got to do is add dimensions. The reason you mark that one inch down 
is you want to start your angle from that one inch mark. That'll come into play as soon as you fold it up and start measuring the uh, the wrappers. But uh, <laughs> if you come from up here, it's really going to change the actual dimension of your duct. So let's just, for the heck of it, let's put 20 up here. So 20 from the one inch mark because the width of the duct begins at the end or the material used by the lock farmer or the Pittsburgh. So it's going to be 21 inches in right there on the one inch. And we're not going to put the second one there. We're going to come down here and we're going to measure 16 inches in from the one inch, which is 17 inches in from the outside edge. Okay. So once we got that, connect these two dots, that becomes the true angle from one inch in here and one inch in there. This becomes the true angle right here. Because this is going to get folded in and have a drive tab bent out. This is going to be folded out and have a drive tab bent out. So at that point, your actual fitting is one inch in to one inch in, and that's your real dimension. So now that we've got this angle established, we add one inch to it for the Pittsburgh. So we just come right here, add one inch to it at that angle, at this angle. If you would have added that one inch without est establishing these two points first, everything is going to be off and that one inch is going to end up being about seven eighths of an inch or a little bit less, which is going to, the Pittsburgh is going to eat that one inch material. So if you only allow seven eighths of an inch, it's going to eat into your duct an eighth of an inch or better. So now there's another thing that I do too. When possible, I try to, to lay out the, the duct system to where I can use the same size transitions in a couple of places, which minimizes my amount of layout time. All right, so now we've got this is going to become a pattern. All right, and now all we have to do is match this angle up right here, and then we scribe this line right here, wherever my scribe with my ice pick went, and guess what? We've got the top and the bottom of the very first transition. What you want to do because is you'll want to mark these things inside and outside. So I like this. It becomes my pattern. So what I'll do because I'll transfer, use this one here to lay out the other transition so that everything is identical. You never want to use this to lay out that one, then use that one to lay out another and on and on because it's like whispering a secret in somebody's ear. By the time it gets through five people, the secret's entirely changed. If you don't use the same pattern, by the time you put four or six of them that, and, and change every single time, your dimensions are going to be tremendously off. So anyway, I like, I like pat, right pattern on that. I'm going to use that one there. This becomes the inside, so I'll put an eye on that right there. And this becomes the inside here. So I put an eye right there. That way I don't have to think about it. So now we'll notch this out and it's ready to uh, run through the lock farmer. But before I do that, I actually have one more transition, the exact dimension. So I'm going to use the pattern here and go ahead and lay out another one, cut it out so I can do all four uh, portions of it at the same time. Now it's entirely personal preference, but I like to cross break uh, anything that has the uh, Pittsburgh on it. I like to cross break that before I run it through the Pittsburgh because once you have that, uh, that, that, that lock, formed on there you and you latch it down into the brake to uh, bend your uh, cross brakes it smashes the, the Pittsburgh joint closed and you have a tough time getting your quarter inch in you have to uh, beat that open or pry it open or whatever to get your your metal in so I like to cross brake it then run it through the lock farmer machine and another reason for marking the eye I don't have to worry about whenever I'm running over there to, to cross brake it uh, with the eye on it, I know which way without even thinking about the transition. Uh, sometimes you might make six transitions exactly the same. They get a little confusing. You don't know how many of the left side, how many of the right side, or how many of the tops, how many of the bottoms you've made. As long as you have it marked eye, it's on the inside of the duct. Nobody can see it, and it takes the question out of it. And so uh, now that I've got them cross broke, we know that the cross break goes like this as it goes through the lock farmer. And again, now I don't have to, don't even have to worry about uh, figuring out which one was my pattern. 
uh, because now we have to measure this, which is going to be a, it's going to be the 24 inch or whatever this cut size was, uh, 20 and a quarter, or whatever. That's going to be the length of that one. However, this one from that one inch mark to this one inch mark is going to be different. It's going to be longer because it's, it's grown in length. And then so you measure the one inch to the one inch and add two to it because that extra inch on either end gets folded back out uh, into your drive uh, your drive tabs. Now that you got everything marked, go about the business of notching. Son-in-law brought up a good uh, a good point yesterday, um, setting up for eating dinner, and we're talking about uh, making these sheet metal videos. And he said, "Man, he said I was waiting to to have you show us exactly how you notch them." And it's like I said, "Darn, I didn't even think about it." So um, I thought maybe I'd show you how we how we notch them. Remember, we have one inch on the ends, quarter on the outside edges. So you notch in here, right to that one inch line and take a little daub off, just like that right there. What we'll do now is uh, take them to the brake and we'll uh, fold these guys. We'll fold those quarter inch bins on them, no cross brake. You don't cross brake something this small a dimension. But we'll put the quarter inch 90 degree bends on them. We'll go to the uh, uh, cleat bender over there. We'll bend the, uh, the the drive cleats on the end of them. And, I, and I'll show you how to uh, bend one of them in and the other end out so that you stay in line with the larger duct on the inlet and realign with the smaller duct on the outlet. So as we assemble this transition, you can see this end here is the one that needs to be cocked in a little bit. This one right here, it's going to come down. It's going to be, it's going to be cocked in, in order to line up with that other duct. That's that's the larger duct. And then, as you assemble it, it goes up to the top, and you know that it has to cock out to straighten it up with the smaller piece of duct going the other direction. Now, obviously, this is not assembled. You're not going to have this big old groove. I'm on the complete outside of my Pittsburgh, so uh, this looks nothing like what it's going to. Uh, whenever it's actually assembled. It's going to be up close and, and really, really, really tight. It's going to be snug like this right here, if you can see that. And there's going to be, it's going to have minimal air leakage. But now you can see why you have to cock the one angle one way and the opposite, or the opposite, uh, the other end the opposite way. Mentioned. This side here is going to remain straight. That's going to be the sharp pieces over here. So, consequently, we don't have to do anything to our drive tabs because they're going to be straight. The small piece of duct is coming straight in and the large piece of duct is coming straight in the other end. However, the other side of the transition, if you can visualize this out in the middle of a, at the end of a four foot run, that four foot duct is wanting to be going this direction right here. So we actually have to cock the, the leading edge of our transition into that angle. And then once we cock it into the angle, you can see now it wants to go out like that. So to make it correct itself and line up with the smaller one, we have to cock the other end of the angle back out that way. That may or may not have made a lot of sense. It may or may not even be on camera, but uh, hopefully you can understand what it was that I said. Now these ain't extremely critical simply because they're covered up by the drive once you assemble the duct and drive the drives on. But anyway, we have these little guys here. Uh, there's all kinds of different manufacturers of them. These are, these are four inch tongs. And all you do is come in here onto your on your one inch mark, which is now only a half inch showing, and you just put a slight bend in. Because this is not very much of an angle. This is only, um, it's only a four inch transition. So you just gently crack it up and then go to the other end and crack it the opposite direction. It bends up, bends down. And just a slight bend is all it takes. See this right here, you can see it coming up and then going that direction, the other end coming down and going out. So when I assemble this transition, it goes like this right here. See how that corrects this angle? Now it's ready to go well reasonably. We'll adjust that a little bit as we're putting the duct together, but it's been coming up at this angle. Now it's going straight again, and the other end is exactly the opposite. The other piece was going at an angle and it corrected to line up with the transition. I certainly hope that made sense. Anyway, this is Tractor Man 44. And I think we're going to call an end to, uh, this is a good stopping point. This is the end of part three. 
of the uh, HVAC sheet metal build for my son.